Okay, I'm going to um, record a short video, a relatively short video, um, to share with you what I want you to uh, do in Microsoft Excel with your data from the Determining Aluminum Foil Thickness Lab. So, I have uh, a data table here with the sample number column, mass in grams, the length and width in centimeters, and the area in square centimeters, and then columns for calculated thickness in each of the units. Um, so in, a, in this I'm going to show you how to let Microsoft Excel calculate some of those things. We'll talk about how to set it up and make sure uh, we only report our significant digits. Um, I've already entered three of my measurements there. Um, so I will enter the other, I will enter two more um, length and width uh, measurements. So <coughs> we have uh, three on there, so I'm going to put another one. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, so I need, I'm going to change this one because I have a typo in there. So I click on that width, it's 8.54 centimeters. Um, then I have one that's 16.30. And you see sometimes Excel will put an extra uh, digit in there, um, and that's too many. My length was only good to two decimal places. If that happens, then you, if you have too many significant figures, then you can click in there, and you can go up here to the top, um, if you'll follow my cursor, to the increase and decrease decimal. So either show fewer or more decimal places. On that one, I need to show fewer. So I'm just reducing that decimal. Um, for the width for that sample was 9.88. And it did that again, added a zero on there, but I want to reduce that because I'm only good to two decimal places. And then for the next sample, the length was 23.10. In that case, it reduced it. it I, need my, I need my second digit in the, or second decimal place there for my sig fix, so I'm going to go back up and I'm going to increase the decimal on that one. And my width was 9.24. And it did that again, so it took my 4 away, so I'm going to put it back like that. And then I'm going to record a mass for each one of those that I measured. Uh, the electronic balance that I used was uh, capable of four decimal places. So I want to make sure that I get four decimal places on here. 1.8085 grams. And see how it reduced that for me? It rounded it back to one decimal place, but I'm going to increase that decimal to what it was um, that was everything off of the balance so I need to enter exactly as the balance said uh, the next one was 1.1952 and do that again and the next one was 0. 7645 and the next one is 1.0801 and then the last one is 1.4923 well. So now I have my masses entered for each individual measurement. Okay, now this uh, column here that I have set up for area in square centimeters, it was rectangular, um, so I'm going to multiply the length times the width, and Excel will do that for me if I tell it to correctly. So I'm going to click in the cell that I want to do the area calculation, 
and I'm going to type in equals and I'll click on the length cell and then I'll use my little asterisk start button there and that means times and then I click in the cell for the width and then I enter and then so I got a return like this so I need to look at that those two measurements each of those measurements have four sig figs so that means that this has to be four sig figs so two six four point eight that's my four sig fig is my eight there's a zero after that so it's just going to stay an eight um, so I need to reduce the decimal um, and make it to where it just goes to four sig figs just like that now I want to repeat that same exact calculation for all of the area measurements I could type it in every time or I can just if if you'll notice I'm in that cell right now and watch how my little plus sign cursor changes as I drag it to the right the bottom right of that cell it becomes like a just a plus sign that's just black if I click right there with the with the left click button and I'll drag it down it'll repeat that calculation for all of those now it made the same number of decimal places for those but if I go look at my individual measurements I have only three significant figures in these columns meaning I can only have three in these columns so all of those need to be rounded up looks like the nearest whole number for square centimeters so I can select those and I can decrease the decimal and let it round it up just like that um, you know that way you can get it to the right you know number of significant figures okay so the next step um, <coughs> is you uh, look at your thickness calculation now I put the formula for that here the one we discussed in class is if you took the the mass divided by the density the mass in grams and the density being in grams per cubic centimeter you could divide that and you know the part right here and then you can divide that whatever that quotient is you can divide that by the area in square centimeters and that'll give you the remaining dimension of thickness or height of the aluminum foil um, you have to use the density of aluminum uh, which I gave you and I, that's over here so if you'll notice where it says in D20 in A23 the density of aluminum in grams per cubic centimeter that I gave you was 2.702 so I put that in its own little cell so I can use that in a calculation so here for this thickness uh, it's going to equal, so I'm going to hit the equal sign, and it's the mass divided by the density. So I want you to open parentheses and do this calculation. Uh, click in the cell for that particular mass for that row. And then divide it by the density. So you click in the number where the cell is for the density right here. And I want to always use that that same number. I don't want to change that one at all for each of these calculations. So while I have that selected, where it says A23, I'm going to choose the F4, Function 4 button at the top of the keyboard. And it's going to change that, and it puts little dollar signs in there. And that will allow it to always use that one. And then I'm going to close that parentheses and then that is divided by my calculated area for that measure, set of measurements and then I hit the enter key now it's rounded it like this if you will look at your sig figs you got um, from your area you've got four you've got five from your mass you've got four from your density so that needs to be four sig figs so there's no sig figs in there right now there are none so you need to increase the decimal until you get to four significant figures like that and if you'll remember that looks like one of your thicknesses that you calculated by hand in lab um, the number of decimal places and everything you know the insignificant zeros placeholders <coughs> now um, 
if you'll do that same thing, you can repeat calculation since you told it to only use that one number for density. If you'll go to the bottom right of that cell until it does its change to changes the cursor, you drag it down. But then you got to go back and you look at your area here with only three significant figures, whereas these still have four. So these need to be reduced in decimal one time like that. Now, um, your thickness in millimeters is pretty simple to calculate. Remember that there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter, so every centimeter you have, you multiply by 10 to get your number of millimeters. So in that cell, you just type the equal sign, click on that cell, the times button, and then 10, and hit enter. And then you need your four sig figs still, so you'll have to increase that decimal. Um, and you can drag and drop that same thing just like before. Only change those columns on this one. Gonna, they're going to have to be reduced um, to three significant figures. Now, and then once you were in millimeters, I gave you a conversion in the lab um, that one mil was equal to this many millimeters. So you can use that if you you know put it in a cell all by itself, the numerical value. Um, for the thickness in mil, which is just thousandths of an inch, so it's an English unit, not a metric unit. Um, it's not millimeters or any, mil, you know, mil is a term used quite often in thickness values. Um, but you click in that cell and it's going to equal your millimeter thickness for that measurement divided by the conversion. So you go down and click in the mil to millimeter conversion, but you always want to use that value. So you're going to use that F4, the function 4 button again for that. And then you have a number, Excel gave me this number, but I need to look at sig figs. So this one down here, I have used four sig figs. And so therefore, here's four sig figs. Um, that one gets to be four sig figs. So I need to decrease the decimal till I get to four sig figs. Then I'm going to do the drag and drop to repeat calculations, same exact thing. But then these here uh, need to be three sig figs. So that'll be a decreased decimal. This one needs to be three sig figs. So I need to decrease that one to three sig figs, so that's that. Alright, now you've got your thicknesses calculated with the correct number of significant figures for each one, each individual measurement. And I'll show you how to use Excel to calculate the average if you don't already know that. So here in this cell for my average thickness in centimeters, and I click in there and I can type in equals, type out the word average, and open parentheses, and it now it's calling for the numbers you want to average. So however measurements you have put into here, um, you will select that many, select them, and hit enter, and it will give you an average. And then you need to fix significant figures. So when you do an average, you're adding numbers. So that goes by the fewest number of decimal places, which you have six in one and five in the others. So this needs to be five decimal places. So there's one, two, three, four, five. The eight, the first eight is my uh, fifth de decimal place. So I need to decrease that to that number. I can also repeat the average calculation by going to the changing the cursor and dragging it to the right. And then I just need to fix decimal places again. So here, in this column, I'm limited to four decimal places, so that needs to be decreased to there. And then here, I'm limited to two decimal places, uh, so there. Um, then I have reportable averages for those, 0.98 mil, um, <coughs> and then 
uh, standard deviation will tell me uh, uh, give me an idea of my precision in my calculation or my measurements um, using my average calculation uh, by comparing each individual point to that mean to that average um, so to get Microsoft Excel to calculate a standard deviation I type in that cell equals and the command is STDEV open parentheses and then select your measurements again and hit enter now what I want you to do on this is to make your uh, if possible make your standard deviation the same number of decimal places as that average so I need to decrease the decimal until the number of decimal places is the same and then I can repeat the standard deviation calculation by dragging it over each one to the right and then I need to change decimal places for here to match so they match up and that works and then the same thing for my meal measurement like that so um, if I want to report this with a standard deviation I can say that the average thickness of the aluminum foil in mil would be um, I could write that as 0 0.98 and then I could do a plus or minus sign um, I'll show you how to do that insert symbol and you've got to search for plus or minus you may have to search more for it you may have to um, look into like uh, your subset for mathematical type things uh, mathematical operators like this and uh, let's see I already have it used frequently but um, I'm trying to find it for you Since I use it all the time, it's right there in mine. But uh, when you find it, um, you just double click it or click insert either one. And then find your plus or minus button. Um, <coughs> but I want you to use the actual insert function. You just have to search for it. Um, and if I'd have looked ahead of time, I'd have known where to tell you to go. But uh, then put your standard deviation like that and then you would put your unit so you could report that as 0.98 plus or minus 0 0.03 mil as the average thickness of your aluminum foil so I want you to uh, take your data and create a table and in Microsoft Excel and I want you to use Microsoft Excel to do the calculations part and I'll check that to see that part there and then you can look at um, how to use Microsoft's insert equation uh, equation editor to uh, use to make your equations okay um, there's a video on that too but anyway uh, I don't want you to look at that and I want you to prepare your Microsoft Excel sheet uh, to send to me okay <laughs>